Hi, or welcome back to another episode of Spit or Swallow Pod <laughs> with your favorite host, House of Chocolates. Yay! <laughs> Today is an amazing day as per usual. Thank you guys for following, for sharing, for your comments, for liking, subscribing, all the good stuff. And with me in the studio, <laughs> you want me to fight you? <laughs> with me in the studio, I have an amazing guest, Jay. Hello. Hi. How Thank you so you? much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Jay is an erotic goddess amongst many things. I'll allow her to introduce herself and we can get into the juicy episode. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for having me. So my name is Joy, and most people call me Jay, and I am an erotic goddess and a Reiki master era. And I do a lot of things. I write, I create graphics works, I do website designing, I do a whole lot of things. Let's just say I'm multidimensional. But most importantly is my work as a guide and as a travel companion and an erotic goddess. So I do mostly guide men through their erotic evolution and i use tools such as bdsm reiki meditation and a lot of kinks to do that thank you that is very robust and i love that i love a i love a multifaceted um body and we're going to get into all of that but before we get into a spit or swallow <laughs> swallow if the condition is right wow, fair. <laughs> let's play a little game a little warm-up Pick three cards. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to... I'm taking out those colored cards because everybody does that. They're like, oh, let's do one of each. Um, Would you date your friend's ex? Well, for girl code, probably no. It must have been shitty for my friends that I say. Huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no? No. Okay. <laughs> How do you handle temptation from other people? I said, okay, this is a relationship question. So I guess this is if you're in a relationship, how do you handle temptation from outside? Well, first of all, I'm poorly. I was gonna. I was just about to be like, <laughs> what do you even practice one other? So temptations are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, last question. Describe what the perfect oral sex would be like. Hmm. Okay. I think the perfect oral sex would be one that is very intentional and is asking me a lot of questions, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't believe men really know how to give oral sex, except they ask. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Love that. Okay, so let's get into the juiciness. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into becoming an erotic goddess? And Reiki healing as well. I love... I love the concepts of like Reiki healing. And when I, when I saw that in your profile, I was like, oh, exciting. So tell yeah. me about that. How did you get into? First of all, I, I, I do know that lots of Nigerian people actually are aware of Reiki. Oh, Reiki. Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody had to go inside. Mm -hmm. And I didn't just go inside the house. I literally went inside in the body, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I just had a separation from a relationship. So I was single again, exploring myself. And at that time, it was as if I had this... First of all, I'm considered a no-energy type, mm. according to human design. Mm. You know, I'm a projector. The colored no-energy type. We don't have sacral energy like mm. the rest of the people. Mm. But in this period, during the pandemic, I was away from all of the overstimulation and sensitization from other people. And it allowed me to get into myself. I was exploring a lot, a lot of my sensations that I've never, ever experienced before. Mm. And it just got me doing a lot of touchy-touchy, you mm -hmm. know, all of those kind of things. And then it got to the point where I think a kind of reconditioning process started happening and more of my gifts started coming up mm. and curious and explorative started trying a lot of playing thingy with my friends and I realized that during those experiences I take them through a certain journey that yeah. is like a guided masturbation journey yeah so and when we are done they're like what the fuck did you do mm. I've never felt this before I've never experienced so it was literally what I was trying with my body mm -hmm. that I was guiding them to to try as well yeah. and so they were like you should Try this. You should do this out there. OnlyFans was around then, mm -hmm. but it wasn't working for Nigerians. And mm -hmm. Fan Central, another one came. And so I just tried that. And it was like, 
wow in that period i made tons of money mm-hmm. <laughs> i made tons of people I'm like okay let's let's see where this goes and us, yeah. i just got hooked into it since then and it's been magical and it's been unraveling different facets of that experience for mm. me mm, i love that i love that thank you so much so tell me about um you know, you spoke about being a guide for men, travel companion, and you know yeah. what you said. I've, oh, I, I, I often talk about how I feel. A lot of men don't understand intimacy, and they don't, they don't appreciate intimacy with themselves. Mm. They, you know, I think that they are far removed from what deep sensations should actually be like, especially when it comes to sex. It's yeah. not just about coming; it's about mm-hmm. a full body experience. They are, they are often not you know Mm -hmm. one with those experiences so tell me about that and your experiences what a typical session is like okay so i'll start with talking from why men are like that Mm -hmm. i feel like men has been they've been dealt a very bad card from when they were very little all that men are not emotional beings women are the emotional beings men are logical beings it's a lie Mm -hmm. because men and women (laughs) men and women did you hear that (laughs) we both have left brain right brain which means we are both logical and emotional right and so because men are so disassociated from that emotional part it makes it difficult for them to be vulnerable enough to touch base with their body Mm -hmm. and enjoy that deep sensation and intimacy so when I started doing that with men it was more of pulling them back from that. Let's just penetrate first, yeah, and like slow down, really slowing them down to like doing things they would never have thought they would do, like touching their chest mm-hmm. and playing with their nipples, and you know, really touching their thighs and really edging themselves and taking. Mm-hmm. It's more like you're delaying gratification yeah. to get to somewhere. So checking them through that journey. And most men, when they experience that, I've had somebody literally go frozen at the point of getting to that base. Like, what the fuck just happened? And I'm like, well, you're just getting started, Mm -hmm. you know. And I've had men who literally cried as well in their sessions when they experienced that high level of sensation Mm -hmm. they've never experienced before. So it's just a journey of slowing down coming back to this body and allowing yourself like giving yourself permission to feel different from this area that mm-hmm. you're used to yes. only feeling yeah. you know it's more like a secret heart connection thingy mm-hmm. once you unlock that connection it just continues to flow into a full body experience yeah yeah no definitely for sure because i mean you know it's how when people talk about nipple simulation for men, mm-hmm. oh no, are you gay? Even if you talk about <laughs> anal simulation, and yeah. over and over we say the same thing. Sex is a sensory experience. It's all about your neurons. Mm-hmm. It's all about sensations. It's all about the different things you can feel. And it can be a very healing, a very spiritual experience if you allow yourself immersed in That's what... The word yeah. Now. If you allow yourself immersed in what you're doing, but once you have that robotic mentality of mm-hmm. just like, I don't have sex, I don't have sex, I don't have sex, mm-hmm. you think you're present, but you're not present nah. at all. You're just moving. It's muscle memory at this point. Your penis is just doing what it knows how to do, mm-hmm. but the rest of your body is not really included in, yeah. in what is happening. Um, and I love that. I love that, you know, you, you're helping people, um, helping people access that. So tell tell me about like, creating you said you do a lot of writing and creating content creation so tell me about, about that. so i consider myself a philosophical writer mm-hmm. and um, more like a psychic medium yeah. sometimes i just feel like i get all these information that i don't know what to do with it so i just write them and eventually as i leave them the clarity comes of what this information really is about so i just write that and then also i like to write a lot from my life experiences as well so i go through a certain challenge i just allow myself to go through that challenge come up on top of it alchemize it somehow then i write about that and share it with my people in my um, substack list so i also have a few books that i've written about Mm -hmm. sex Mm -hmm. you know there's one called odd sex it's a secret to intimacy between couples 
committed couples, not necessarily married couples, but yeah. couples who are. And it just basically helps them to talk about sex. I know that talking about sex is going to be quite difficult for people in this part of the world. I mean, they talk about we want to have sex, but not really about sex. About sex yeah. So yeah, I wrote that book about it. Then I wrote one about squirting and one about oral sex as well. So yeah, that's just basically most of the things that I write. But I write mostly about spiritual matters and, you know, relationships more than anything else. And about creating erotic films... I do a lot of that, and I do that based on my perception of what I think love should be mm. in, I mean, sex should be in a relationship that is based on unconditional love. Mm. You know, it's not about, I love you and I possess you, you know. I mean, if we have a relationship with someone, sex should be as fluid as our human experiences. It yeah. should not be put in a box. So my films are basically... Films that show love and sex in very revolutionized kind of way, sort of. Mm, I love that. Sounds very passionate <laughs> and sensual and yeah, yeah. energetic. <laughs> mm. Um. Okay. So yeah, what was that thing we uh we said we we're going to discuss? Um, navigating unconventional relationship styles in yeah. a very judgmental society, which is, you know, what's... I feel like almost every episode now, people even think I'm anti-monogamy <laughs> at this point because I'm always like, right. polyamory. But it's like, no, if monogamy works for you, yeah, but statistically, it, we're failing at it. And um, yes, you know, if that's your jam, work hard at maintaining yeah. that. But if you're not into the rigid love styles and mm -hmm. relationship styles, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think that we need to also have these conversations and have conversations about engaging in those relationship styles in a healthy manner because yeah. polyamory, as I always say, is as many partners you have, is that many times the communication, that mm -hmm. many times the openness, mm -hmm. that many times the work, the honesty. So um, what is your experience? How did you realize that, you know, I don't want a possessive love. I want to maintain my autonomy within the space okay. of love. And, you know, yeah. And I think almost every poly person I've experienced this at some point. You know, when we were in secondary school, I would say, I have this boyfriend, but I love this person too. And then my friends would be like, oh, no, you don't love that first person is the reason why you love this person. But inside of me, I know that, yes, I love this person. I might not love them Equally, mm. I might love different things about them, but I love them in the sense of love. Not mm. talking about romantic, but love. Love this person and I love this person. But I didn't get it. So, I mean, people were telling me that it's not right. So I had to stick with that. But then after my university days, I realized that having one person isn't just enough for me. Mm -hmm. It's just not realistic. I don't want to be everything for one person. It's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have one person to be everything for me because sometimes I just realize that people are in your life for different reasons. Yeah. You know, according to one um, poly pioneer, Kenya K. Stevens, she has this book called Nine Expressions of Love. And she says in that book that every, those nine expressions of love, you could have a soul, you know, partner, a womb partner, a womb choice, a soul choice, you know, all of those different choices. I can't really remember them. Mm -hmm. And it, really, in my experience, I feel like it's true because I want to have sex with this person. I love them. I enjoy sex with them. But I love this person, but I don't enjoy sex with them. Mm -hmm. I enjoy creating businesses with this person, mm -hmm. you know, building generational wealth with this person. Mm -hmm. Or this person, I love this person. I can have amazing conversation with them. They can be emotionally available for me at all times, like the other two people cannot be. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to force those two people to be that person that yeah. they can be when I can have someone else be that person for me? Yeah. So I came face to face with that reality that, you know what? I think I'm going to allow myself to just explore this a little while. It was quite difficult. I mean, coming from a place where monogamy was a thing. So having to communicate in those relationships were a hassle. Like having to create boundaries, ground rules, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, started just allowing myself to navigate all of it. Yeah. Break up when it's no longer working. Mm -hmm. 
come together. In fact, all of my exes are still my friends. Mm. Because we came to the point where we knew that we had to let each other go. There's no point to be holding on so much tight when it's not working. Yeah. And they still support my life mm -hmm. in amazing ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would I want to give that up <laughs> for monogamy? You know, I'm not saying monogamy is bad, but if we really look at it, so many people would rather be better in a poly situation, but yeah. they are so stuck in the monogamous Yeah, and, I, and understandable because obviously religion, religion has reaffirmed this, um, this yeah. love style. And then for various reasons as well, people's idea of what a family should look like, the structure of family, even the law supports monogamy. And I think time. most people too also mistake polygamy with poly relationships or dynamics. Mm -hmm. So they don't understand how it works and so they cancel it out like, it can never work. Having too many... No, I mean, you just have to create a system for these things mm -hmm. like every other thing. Yeah. And so that's what I was going to ask you. What is your own poly style? So I... um. I'm somebody that you call non-ethical monogamy. Yeah. I like the idea of having one primary partner mm -hmm. that I ethical can... Ethical non-monogamy. Yeah. Not non-ethical. I was like, not ethical. <laughs> Sorry, ethical non-monogamy. Ethical non-monogamy, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the idea of having one primary partner mm -hmm. and then having a, a, an umbrella of partners. So it's like the one, like that's it. the one in the center. <laughs> we both understand each other. He's yeah. free to have all of his own branches of partner as well. But we know that it's just us that mm -hmm. is the center of it all. Yeah. And oftentimes, I find out that my polio experiences only just stem into a little bit of more of relationship than sexual. Because, mm. like I said, when I started, I'm a projector, what you call non-energy type. I don't have so much energy to have sex with so many people. Yeah. Right? And I think that's one of the mistakes people make with poly. They think it's an invitation to have multiple sexual partners. Yeah. That's just one part of it. But yeah. on a broader scale... There's just, love. There's the love aspect. Yeah. The on the broader scale, aspect, that yeah. even the very first initiators of this, on a broader scale, it was about community. Mm -hmm. It was about people coming together to create generational wealth mm -hmm. and to create a community where every child has more than one example mm -hmm. to learn about life from, you yeah. know. So I feel like that's how my own style is. So I can swing with my partners on days that I feel feel like it. But days that I'm not in the mood, which could be months, <laughs> you're free to do your thing. I will just be here, you know. But I can talk to other partners. I can create with other partners. I can have relationships with other partners, whether, you know, whatever kind. And I think that's one drawback with monogamous relationships. You hardly ever see them being able to create anything with the opposite partners, even though we all need... I can't be running a business and have a lot of women around me. I need men around me as a doers. But most monogamous relationships can't do that because of fear of, oh, she's going to think I'm cheating. Oh, she's going to think... So I'm that's one thing yeah. that really weirds me out. How... <laughs> Once people get married or they enter relationships, all of a sudden, when you're in a relationship, getting a new male friend is a problem. Yeah. I mean, why? <laughs> Same thing with like, oh, yeah, your your partner building a relationship with another woman is a problem. Why? Because you feel like they're a threat to your relationship. And I feel like that's just like You also find that you get in a relationship and many of your supposed male friends will dial back. I remember there was even someone telling me one time that, oh, yeah, I can't, I can't buy you presents like before because I don't want to get in trouble with your boyfriend. I'm just like, what does he yeah, have to do humans. with You're our friendship? You're to be our expansive and receive. Friendship, you know. And I was like, what does he have to do with our friendship? And he's like, no, I have, it has happened before. I don't want Wahala. I don't want Wahala. And I find it really hmm. weird because it's like, I don't expect that entering a relationship means... I begin to lose in different aspects of my life. Yeah. What's the point of entering a relationship when all of a sudden, first of all, people sacrifice the sexual bits because you want to form okay. Do they really? On the surface, they pretend like, you know, you cut off all your sexual partners, da, 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 da. And yes, one person can be enough for you and you can build and you guys can grow together in your sexual journey and it can mm -hmm. be wonderful and fantastic. But that is one sacrifice everybody expect, expects people to make. If you both feel like, yeah, on that level, wait, Omar, my jealousy is stronger than that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. But then it's also on a social level. It's really for women. And it's women who get the short end of the stick. You see women, they start to drop their single friends. Mm -hmm. Understood that, yes. 
at certain points in time, there are certain friends you would prefer around you because if you're if you start having kids and many of your friends are single people who don't have kids, your community will be better with fellow, mm-hmm. you know, nurturers or mothers who can people can have you in your group chat talking about milking and this one and that one understood. But the drastic change in people's lives. And that's almost why people are like, if you don't pick the right person, they can destroy your life. Exactly. It's such a huge, like, it's like, there's so much, yeah, there's so, yeah, to there's so much work. pressure to make the right decision and to make it work. And that's why we, I feel like there's just so much stress and depression in, in the land because then you find people who know, oh my God, I might have made a mistake. But then opting out mm. is not as easy. You've had your flamboyant wedding. You've done all of that stuff. Your family is involved. Who knows what else is hinged on that union. Mm-hmm. And it's so stressful because I'm like, life is already hard enough. A partner should elevate your experience. It's like, okay, I'm experiencing this earth. I'm experiencing this world. Mm. And I'm doing this alongside somebody. Yeah. Well, we should experience the fullness of this planet as best we know how, supporting each other. Some people are very, like, in their um poly style. There's no hierarchy. Mm. You are number one. Me, I know myself. I like, <laughs> I must be number one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't want to hear that one. That's my business. I, lo- I love the hierarchy. You know, it's like, okay, this is the core. Then the extras are, yeah. you know, supporting actors and actresses. And sometimes everybody go away. Mm-hmm. I, I just have capacity for this right now, yeah. you know. Um, but for some people, they're like, yeah, like, um, all of us are even me and you can be here together. This person, and this person can be here together. That's just a lot. It's just too much for me. But some <laughs> people do it and they enjoy mm-hmm. it. And fluidity of life, you can do that for a while. I'm like, you know what? This is not working for me. I'm tired. I want to. I want to actually close this. I want to do monogamy. I want to focus yeah. on this and stuff. Um. So I was going to say. So if you if you're in your um polycule or however you design your relationship, can you have a child with your with the other people, or you would keep it to your core partner? So for me, I would prefer to keep it to my core partner. Yeah. Yeah. That's my own preference. Because, like I said, I like the center and the... And then the yeah. extras. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, extras, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be it for me. Okay. okay. And one thing that I would say, I feel like our mothers did us a disservice with the old silent thingy. Mm. Because most of them had a secret love affairs that they dared not talk about. Mm. And they dare not even look at. Mm. And then... Not talking about it made our generation feel like it is the numb and it is okay. I mean, I was having a conversation with my mom when I was back home and I was I was shocked and mind blown. I said, wow. So for 30 years, you literally did not see anything about this. And I've literally picked a lot <laughs> from looking at your relationship with my dad. If I had not gotten to a point where I had to repair it myself in relationships, I would have held on tight to that mm-hmm. and literally be unfulfilled and unsatisfied with my love life. It's crazy. No, it really is. It really is. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, one thing about humans is we will always find ways to make the best of what we have. Yeah. And people will always find ways to satisfy their urges. And, you know, let there be let there be shame, let there be judgment, <laughs> let there be anything. What will happen is people will just sneak around or they will cheat or they will lie or they will, you know. And so that's why in some ways I, I like the fact that women are cheating more brazenly these days. <laughs> like they're showing men. It's like my own is everybody should behave or nobody should behave. And men that's don't even have any idea that they don't know how to cheat. Fam, <laughs> like there was one time, oh my God, there was one time when I, I remember I was arguing with... um some guys and they're talking about this whole oh why would a woman basically remain a body once she gets married that like, you need to change mm-hmm. you know I won't even tell you know how men who say stuff like obviously as was a married woman you kind of have like a curfew you can't be going out all the time this that that and that. so I, you know, and I said well I said something along the lines of that's why half of Nigerian men their kids are not really their kids and stuff and then <laughs> I actually have to apologize because he took it really personally not not personally like he was angry but he had to pause and think and like he actually was like, you know when you, if someone's just like Felt Jesus it. I'm like please well, don't go and pluck your child here I'm going to do the because Halima just said you know a blanket it statement like obviously there are people who are, and a lot of women are actually faithful as well Um, but many yeah. people are cheating people are cheating at work mm-hmm. people are cheating and it's just like you know we keep talking about this thing all the time all the time it almost feels like we're flogging the same conversation but the fact of the matter is 
cheating is also really damaging. It is. It is. Like, it's, it's all fun and games to just be like, oh, yes, your partner needs to see with other people and so But it's like, if you know that this is how you are, then you communicate that and you find people who are lying because yeah. there are also women who think that they they don't want to sleep with only one person for the rest of their life. Not that they don't love their primary partner or yeah. their main person, but they just feel like, oh yeah, I too also want to do that. But they can't even, they don't even dare bring up the topic. Like they feel like, you find men who feel like you're disrespecting me by talking about another person. Same thing with women as well. Mm. But it's like you, you go and cheat. He will go and cheat. But you feel like talking to each other about this is being disrespectful. And so... You know, that thing about, yeah, let's hide. Let's talk about this in there. But me, my own's like, no, in my own world, open everything. Let everybody talk about everything. I love honesty so much. And it doesn't mean honesty doesn't stink, but mm -hmm. you sleep better. Like, truth is so, so liberating, liberating, you know? And that's just where I just I just want us to get to that point. But, I mean, life is also cyclical. Though. There might be a time where we dismantle all systems and mm -hmm. it's a free world. Mm -hmm. Then something will happen and people will not come and start romanticizing monogamy again. I really look forward to that. Then <laughs> everybody will now enter monogamy again. Then, you know, it's an <laughs> endless it's cycle. Always it's always an endless cycle. But, honestly, I, I remember I was, I, was, I was listening to this um, podcast and the episode was titled Maybe It's Okay to Cheat. And then he said... Um, the guy he's a gay guy he has a partner and they're currently poly I think they're monogamous at some time and he was talking about how he feels like why is monogamy the one thing that people leave no room for mistakes like they feel like perfection is yeah. expected he's like okay so if you have somebody a partner of 10 15 years and they cheated only three times did they pass or did they fail <laughs> and you know so i mean logically and realistically yeah if it sounds like okay you know fair enough but still it can be really hurtful i don't know i don't i, I feel like when it comes to like love our ideas of love what we've seen it's very tough because you can say all of this one logically. Or even me, I can make all the mouths. Yeah. And then you enter a thing with a person and they say, oh, by the way, I did this and you want to die. Can I can know? I share my opinion about cheating? Mm -hmm. So this is for me. I, I totally, absolutely hate cheating. It's a deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. And you know why it's a deal breaker for me? It's because I'm this person that is as open as a book. I'll give you every room to be yourself. I'll give you the freedom to be yourself. So... If I give you the freedom to be yourself, it means that you have to be able to communicate with me honestly and openly. Mm -hmm. So if I have given you all of that liberty, why do you think you still have to cheat on me? So if you have to cheat on me, then it means there's a problem. I don't want to deal with that problem because I already gave you all of the liberty. Yeah. Now, in monogamous relationship, I feel like people don't really give liberty. It's enough to expect somebody to not make a mistake of cheating mm -hmm. and then you cannot forgive them for that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just my opinion about cheating. I don't yeah. I don't condone it, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I feel like if we would not condone cheating, then we should give like a ground for it to not even happen in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, even if you tell men, yes, it's okay. It's okay. Do what you first of all, a lot of men believe that if you're telling them wants to be another baby, it means you hate me. You it means that you hate them. It means you don't care. It means uh -uh. how can you actually love me and they are okay with me being with another person? Half of this is them obviously projecting their own feelings of I can't imagine anybody with mm -hmm. you. But it's just like no, that's disrespectful. Da, da, da. Some will even be afraid. And then even in telling, I think that some people just have that issue of just telling the truth. Yeah. It's just, it's very, because it's different. It's also uncomfortable. It's like, hmm, I don't trust you. Yeah, you're telling me I can do what I want. And a lot of it, for me, I feel like a good 75% of it is that ownership of, if you're telling me I can do what I want, that means you, you want to do what you want. And me, I cannot have it. I'd rather do what I want, but you, you don't do what you want. And many people <laughs> are like that, vice versa as well. Women who want to do what they want. They don't want their partners. And it's not even just, obviously, men, women. This is me even coming from a heterosexual standpoint. Whatever sexuality as well. Sometimes, a lot of times, love comes with that possessive, you know, nature. And the, the possessiveness is not even from me. Oh, I just want to collect this. A, a lot of it has to do with, like, our attachment styles. You know, yeah. going back to, like, your mother wound or whatever it is. Like, that whole 
fear of abandonment mm-hmm. is a huge thing. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be left. You can find people holding on to something that you know is toxic. It's not for them. It doesn't work. But what is holding you is not how good that relationship is. It's just your fear of being left, your fear of being alone. And unfortunately for us, I don't know, even me, with all my knowledge and <laughs> psychology and all of that, I hate how breakups fucking stink. It does. Like, no, you have to it go does. through the emotions. It does. Because the soul must rise in your body. <laughs> you must do all of that stuff. It does. Sometimes, the thing is, and you can never even tell how a breakup is going to affect you because you may there are some people that feel like I beg I don't send this one Mm -hmm. lay and next thing you cannot eat for one week you know so you you (laughs) always have to go through the emotions like some people say oh you know for them friendship breakups have been heavier than that hasn't been my own experience they they can pain me but it will not affect me the way a romantic breakup will affect me like the first week the first day I'm not sleeping I'm awake (laughs) every 30 30 minutes I'm going to open my eyes and it's so annoying how you have to go through the emotions of and grieve it yes you have to it literally is grief you yeah. have to grieve that whole I mean it's like a part of you has been pulled out yes and you have to deal with that shit and you it's, have to deal not... with that shit yeah <laughs> that shit is crazy <laughs> and I can I can I share what when you were talking about um, emotions mm-hmm. I feel like people think poly people don't get jealous Mm-hmm. It's why I tell people in my circle, don't go into poly until you have learned how to regulate your emotions mm. on your own. It's self not for the, emotionally immature people. Is so because important. whatever you're going to feel in a monogamous relationship, you are going to feel it times two in a poly relationship. I get jealous sometimes when my partner tells me he's going out to meet certain people. But I have... So this is why I don't believe in boundaries. Mm. I believe more in protocols, which I mm. think works better in poly relationships. Because mm. boundary is you literally telling somebody that this is how this person is, but I can't let you be yourself around me. If you if you cannot be how I expect you to be, you gotta go. Mm. But protocol is me saying, okay, what part of me is really expecting? I have a standard, mm-hmm. but do I really expect this person to meet that standard, or am I not seeing the way they are trying to meet this standard that is not? following my expectations mm-hmm. so if i feel jealous i come back inside myself mm-hmm. to create that safe space first inside yeah. myself so i've gotten to a point where i realized that sometimes my ego does not just want to hear you tell me about your sexual escapade mm-hmm. it's going to mess with that possessive yeah part don't tell me in those instances. Just keep it to yourself. Go yeah. do your thing. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know. Yeah, I don't want to know about it. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> so I can get jealous. I mm-hmm. can have all of these human emotions that happen, but yeah. I can self-regulate. Mm-hmm. And when I cannot self-regulate, I can come to my partner and communicate with yeah, my partner effectively yeah. without projecting because I have first suited myself. Mm-hmm. And now I can tell my partner what I'm feeling rather than yeah. what I think they're doing. Yeah. And that makes them kind of like mm, open. Amen on what I think to they're lean, doing. To, to listen because men are literally, men like you to come direct. But we women like to be very passive when we're communicating. Oh, my men are, men are, as, <laughs> men are so, as passive as women. I they know even, that, but when petty. it comes to communication, I've, I've noticed it a lot. So when I come to my partner and tell him, I feel like you are doing this and it's making me feel scared and it's making me feel like this. It's not like you keep doing this all the time and, it, you know, I'm... That just makes them feel defensive. I don't want you to be defensive. I want you to hear me and listen to me. So yeah. I, I, I come and talk to you after I have emotionally I've regulated yeah. myself. Yeah. And I've also noticed this, that a lot of people, our authority is literally how we make decisions to respond to emotions. Mm. Some people have emotional authorities. Those people, you must never literally communicate with your partner when you are feeling that emotion. You mm-hmm. will always, most times miscommunicate and it will cause conflict mm-hmm. and a lot of problem. Mm-hmm. So just, I like to take time and just come back first and see what this is telling me. After I've released that, I go and communicate. Mm-hmm. I've taken a break from my partner for like months and say, you know what, just be on your own right now. I, I can't deal with you right now. Mm-hmm. That happens. Mm-hmm. So I feel like every months, relationship just... <laughs> taking I mean, a no. break for months? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could come back, but just just stay your day. Let me sort myself. When I sort myself, we can come back and resume our relationship. Yeah. So I feel like when we just allow freedom to exist in relationship, a lot of 
things can expand. There's mm-hmm. the sky is just a starting point for us to enjoy peace and bliss in our relationships. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely agree with that. So I think that obviously, even in the um polyamory world, you know, you know what compression is, right? It's where they say it's joy that you feel because your partner is feeling love with another person. Go turn up fire you and compression. Um and you know some people also feel like they are more superior because they feel like they can feel compression. I'm just like, no. nah, fuck that yeah, shit. Like, well, I don't us. know. <laughs> we'll get the shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's no. We will feel the jealousy, we'll but it's but, it. but that's the thing, you know. We'll jealousy it. is all obviously it comes from a threat of you feeling like ah you are taking away yeah, your something potential. That's important to me. Something that's well, something that is mine. Why am mm-hmm. I sharing my property? You know. And it's okay to feel that and it's okay to communicate that. And I, and I like what you said about, you know, being able to sell. That's a huge thing. Yeah. A lot of emotional issues and challenges in the world has to do with regulation self-regulation Mm co-regulation if people can self-soothe and sometimes even going to your partner but the thing about going to your partner to even um for them to co-regulate with you and say okay you know what hey i'm actually feeling some type of way right now or you going there has made me feel abandoned and you know it's it, it sounds nice and sounds skinny no, it's, it's work. but it's it's <laughs> it is work and it's also it's also dependent on the emotional capacity of the person that you're with because if that one wants to get defensive first of all for me to even come and communicate with you and tell you i'm feeling jealous it requires a lot of vulnerability and openness. I have now carried my heart. I put it like this. I said, okay, this is how I feel in the mm-hmm. moment. And it's not left to you to be like, Accept you know, G guess, or to be like, oh, I understand. I see what you're saying. But if you come and you have defensive and stuff, what that will do is it will make me recline. And next time, when you say, oh, I'm going yeah. here, I'm going there, <laughs> you're going to say, oh, those other girls. Like, it's like when we do that, all those things come from a place of fear. It's just how we're communicating the fear. Like, nobody wants to seem vulnerable, mm-hmm. you know, so it's easier to use anger and aggression yeah. to, to look for. There are almost sometimes when people, when someone is even giving you all that heat, mm-hmm. they're literally begging you to connect with them. It's just, we struggle to articulate how we feel and to put ourselves out there. And so, yeah, like I, like you said, I definitely agree that the sky is your limit if we have that freedom to you know, be how we are and communicate and learn and all of that stuff. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's not happening overnight. <laughs> You'll fight. Even me with all my hair. Da, 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 da. Yeah. There are some people that just trigger me. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's like, it doesn't, it, in, we can be yanning now, five seconds while fighting. Like yeah. some people yeah. trigger you more than others because both of you, it may even be your argument styles. I, 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 I Often, often talk about argument styles like yes people talk about love languages but your argument styles are also important do we argue the same way how mm-hmm. are we how do we get when we fight is your ego um, um, is your ego and my ego are they compatible or are we like am I the kind of person that will come down for you or yeah. are you the kind of person that is like nah you know some people in the heat of the moment what is what is important is winning the argument or be, being right you know and then for some, it's like, okay, I'm going to... I think it's a 50-50 thing for me. I also don't like people who say sorry just to de-escalate yeah, the situation. Yeah. I don't like being patronized. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're always right. Okay, sorry. Da, da, da. No. Mm-hmm. It's like you said, are you hearing me? Yeah. I need you to listen to what I'm saying. I will try my best to communicate like a proper person <laughs> but some days I will be mad and it's up to you and the same way you know there will be some days when you're coming at me with extra energy and I can also recognize like okay, if you know your person maybe they're stressed at work today maybe something else is going on maybe they haven't slept that snappiness is not you yeah. and it's not for you to you know internalize and so it's always about rupture and repair rupture and repair connection and disconnection yeah. and actually being committed to building your relationship and you know strengthening all the different aspects will strengthen every other aspect like if your sex life your communication game is strong emotionally you can also translate that into your sex life because you know that when you say certain things they don't take it personally or they know that you are already an open and honest person and you're not doing this to say the one that will paint them you know you're not trying to be <laughs> like manipulative like you said you said you know find your person yes but it's easy find the person you go give her the lecture where they <laughs> 
<laughs> it's hard, like you said, like sometimes you try and try and you realize that Omo, yeah. it's not working, please be going. Exactly. We're just we can't, we're just not on the same. And the, the deeper you go into you know, understanding the body, the mind, how fluid, you know, life is, how energy works, communication, attachment style, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. The more your requirements for a partner go up. Yeah. Because you need someone who has started the work in some way or is willing or open to learn. And so things like, oh, is it rich? Is it fine? Is it all? Yeah, those are, that's one thing. But what's really going to sustain the connection is you guys actually being able to meet like soul to soul, you know? In every way. Because I feel like some of us come into this lifetime to literally work on relationships. So you find yourself entering certain relationships and it's hell and you have to get out of that. And then you find heaven from there. You get into another one. You find another hell. You transmit it into heaven and continue to go like that. And I feel like we have to give ourselves that freedom to explore relationship for what it is. It's a mirror. Mm. It's supposed to teach us. It's supposed to help us mm. to realize what we want, what we don't want. Hashtag mirror. What we do not desire to do to other people, what we want people to do to us. And we continue to learn rather than old on tight. I mean, we know when a relationship has served its cause and purpose, but we it's so hard it's, to let no, it go. No, it's hard to let, let <laughs> it go. It's hard, it. But the it's thing hard. is, I think that once it's done, once your spirit is done with something, you can try and you'll be suffering. You just find that you're just suffering and yeah. suffering and suffering until you release you that it. connection. Like, yes, you can meet somebody and da da da, but if that shit wasn't meant to be, no yeah. more. you will never be happy in that mm-hmm. setting. And you actually mm-hmm. need to, mm-hmm. you need to let go. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's almost deep. It's actually deep. Like relationships, <laughs> relation dealing with human beings. That thing you said about it being a mirror. Yeah. Um, that's something that I've also learned in recent times how there are certain people who make you see how you can get like you bring out the demon in me Mm -hmm. and sometimes (laughs) perhaps it was necessary to see how much of a demon I can be and my own demon is not looking about beating all those kind of uh, you know type of (laughs) abuse but even just verbally you can be somebody who yes when I'm angry I say all sorts of things and you're actually being a verbally abusive person and you realize that, you know, certain relationships make you realize the kind of person that you can be. And you're like, oh, moving forward, I don't want to ever be that mm-hmm. person. I don't want anyone to ever trigger me to that point. Yeah. Like, you know, yes, it can be sweeter, to be honest. Me, I love, I don't like surface. Um, I don't like surface relationships. Like, if I just play, let's play. We know it's physical, let's mm-hmm. play. But we're going to go in, let's well, just be committed to... Yeah. Digging this shit out. Yes, I love, like, I love, even with my friends, I love seeing into people's soul. Like, I want to know your origin story. I want to yeah. know what makes you tick. I want to understand you. Like, I, I feel like when you connect on levels where beyond human comprehension, where it's just like, did they tie our spirits together inside <laughs> one river? I'm like, yeah, that's that's what makes life, you know, really, interesting. Yeah. And it just, it just makes it. Um, that's true. Yeah, so, um, what would you say has been your memorable experience so far with, you know, all you've been doing? Like, one experience that you will always think of. If, if if someone thinks, hmm, that day the energy was just otherworldly, either with yourself or with with um someone that you were guiding or with your partner. It's hmm. just one time where you're like, wow, this is spiritual. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. I think it would be... Probably a, one of my last encounter with a partner, mm-hmm. you know. So I was um, literally, we were going through our usual phase of, you know, let's just stay on that side. Let me deal with my shit. And then I, I just was like in my house, just magically in my head thinking of what the fuck? Why am I just so difficult like this? I just wish this person could just, you know, be here literally. And two days after, he literally came from the UK <laughs> to surprise me with a visit. And that night, we went for an event, and it was literally like a manifestation of the life that I literally am mm-hmm. envisioning mm-hmm. with a partner. You know, we, we, had, we did a lot of things. We had a lot of amazing moments together. And that day, I even I, I helped him, guided him to have his first ever non-ejaculatory orgasm. Mm. That's very difficult for men to do, mm. to have an orgasm without ejaculation. Mm. And 
that was just mind blowing for both of us because it was a feat for both of us. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been doing that for clients, I've never done that with your own partner. partner. That would be such a bond. It was and like a experience. blast, and mm-hmm. we were like, "Wow!" It was like his eyes were watery. You know that kind of. It's, it's like a journey into, I could literally like see his soul pop out from his eyes and I'm like, Jesus Christ, what is this? You know, it was very magical and a very blissful experience for me. Yeah, think, that yeah, sounds that really beautiful. Him. I love that. I love that, you know. And that's 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 literally what it's all about. Mm. People realizing that we have so many gifts on this. Our bodies are literally magical of, yeah. there is so much that we can experience there's so much if we actually just explore and think of think outside but calm down breathe inhale you know relax slow down you know we're just so go 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 but overly like, simulated yes we actually are we actually are overly simulated and you know sometimes too it's like even when people want to have sex it's just like okay 10 minutes 20 minutes like nah okay how about today we are going to have sex for six hours. I said one time on my Instagram when I said I masturbate for like one hour to two hours and people were in my comments and like, what, Jay, what do you do? What the fuck do you do? I'm like, before I even get to my pussy, it could take me like about one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. I mean, there's a whole lot from up here down to my feet that I mm-hmm. could explore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of people are just not in tune with. Yeah. I mean, we already have that. How do you help people deal with <laughs> masturbation shame? Because we already have that a lot in Nigeria. You see people going to church giving testimony of the spirit of masturbation. <laughs> I prayed it away or, you know, all that stuff. No, nah, I mean, I've, as somebody who have experienced masturbation addiction before too, I can tell you there's no spirit of evil or anything. I mean... I, I know for a fact that it can usually feel like there's a spirit compelling you from within you to move and go and masturbate. And when you finish, it's just all done. Mm-hmm. And it's just mechanics of human ex- body, like it's a design. So I, I know you're familiar with the chakra system. Yeah, It's a science of the energy within the body. Mm-hmm. And the root chakra, which is happens to be our desire for sex, is where the motivation and libido for sex comes. Mm-hmm. And then there's a chakra, which is uh, flowing or feeling the sexual energy itself. Mm-hmm. So what happens with people who are addicted to masturbation is that there's this, if you have a defined root chakra, chakra there's a pressure in that spot to consistently do something Mm -hmm. now the creative energy of the sacral chakra Mm -hmm. which is obviously when people feel horny they usually think it's an invitation to go and have sex Mm -hmm. oftentimes it's just that creative energy flowing within us and people could dance with it they could do artistic things with it and all that Mm -hmm. but for someone who's unaware that becomes so intense coupled with the pressure and pulse of your root chakra to go and do something you cannot. You feel like there's that surge to just release that energy, and you can't help it, and you masturbate until when you finish, you gonna feel shitty afterwards. Yeah. My advice usually would be to find some other creative channel to use that energy for. Yeah. That was literally how I had to go through my own because I got to a point of like, it starts to affect your life experiences. It's not literally like masturbation is bad. It's great. You learn about your body, you, you know, you can teach your partner. You can even use that to release dormant pent-up energy. Yeah. But when it begins to interfere with other things in your life, yeah, then you have you to... you have a challenge. Yeah. So, and a lot of this is definitely compulsion, which stems what... from something. Like you said, for some people, it is, I have that burst of energy and it releases. Yeah. For other people, it is, I'm, I don't want to deal with something else that I'm feeling. Let me look for something that feels good. Then you have, yeah, you have those moments where, oh, you're masturbating, you're doing whatever. Then the release, and then you're back to. It's you're done. even lower than, yeah, you're done. And now you want to you're addition. even lower than where you were before. <laughs> and so what happens is now you're trying to either, you keep trying to chase that high of yeah. the moments between like your build up and then the peaking. And then once you're in the crash, I don't want the crash. You want to go back and do it again. So with everything, you know, with porn, sex, masturbation everything is all about My use mm-hmm. how you use how you engage with this your relationship with this how you think about it how you just yeah just basically how you use yeah, these things the consciousness really for me i mm-hmm. think when we begin to experience masturbation from a very mindful and conscious place it takes us away from that compulsion like you said to constantly want to do it because it's literally energy I could channel that energy into something else without mm-hmm. having to use it as masturbation. Yeah. You know. And I, I did a lot of 
teaching about that last year and did a lot of recording about mindful masturbation. Yeah. yeah last year when I had people who were dealing with that masturbation addiction. And it's quite helpful when you begin to like use all of those approach to use that energy in a different way. It's going to be difficult, I'm not going to lie, because it's, it's going to take a re-engineering of your brain, so to say. But the more you like focus on discipline, like disciplining yourself. I even tell people, if you feel that urge and you know that nothing is working, like you can't get yourself to um, do something like yoga or dance or something, have like a friend that you can trust that can help you through it. It's like whenever you're feeling that, call them in that moment. Use that energy to have a bonding experience with them in that moment. Or just force yourself to go out and go take a walk. Before you come back, the energy is gone. You yeah. don't even want to masturbate again. Yeah. So I think that um, with those ones and even with like... Um, so I don't believe in sex addiction as mm. a word. Yes, there is... You can have compulsive behaviors with sex and all, but in the clinical sense, you can't actually be addicted, addicted to sex. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, when you even ask people, if you ask five, ten people, what is sex addiction to you? Everybody's idea of what sex addiction is will be different. And so that's the thing about even masturbation, even sex, even um, anything erotic. So much of this has to do with our own internal moral compass, how we deal with this, how we process things. For me now, if I say, oh, I had sex 14 times this week, I may not feel, I would even be happy like, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't, you know. So people say, Jesus, something's wrong with you. It's like, no, I had the energy, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so it's like, there's no medical yardstick to say, oh, this is too much, this is that. But it's obviously, is it causing you distress? Exactly. Why is it causing you distress? Is it causing you distress because it's affecting you medically? Is it causing you distress because it's affecting your job? Or your financial stress is it causing is it causing you distress because it's affecting your relationships, or is it causing you distress because you feel like pastor told you that it's bad and that's why I feel so like it's bad. So you know, first. exactly understanding why you have the challenges, and if you feel like okay, I just want to stop it, but I just still feel the compulsion. Then what steps do you take to interrupt? Like you said, okay, this urge is there. Do I call a friend? Mm -hmm. Do I say okay, I'm going to do. I'm not going to allow, I'm going to block all the porn websites. I'm going to end up my, my subscriptions. So, you know, it's it's really relative to, you know, you and your situation. But this is also why people see therapists because sometimes you need to go inward. And sometimes what you need to do is even get into the root of the challenge or the issue. Like, I mean, nothing works unless you get to the root yeah, of it. Yeah, well, what is causing that behavior? Because sometimes once you deal with what is causing the issue, just the what you do stops. So, yeah, um... That is amazing. Where are we? I feel like we've, we've talked on the talk before. We talked for for two hours. <laughs> but last thing, um, we can keep it short. How? What do you? What do you want to say with the ties of um or regarding ties of spirituality and sex? Oh wow! So I think um, sex is the most spiritual experience that we can have as humans. You know, mm -hmm. starting from even the process of how that creates life. Life it creates us. It's literally the energy we used to do every single thing that exists in this planet right now. So I believe that if we want to have better sex, we have to learn to come back to our spirituality. Because, and I'm not talking about voodoo or occult right now. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the literal science of life, the mm -hmm. nature, like the laws of nature, you know, how you behave, emotions, empathy, kindness, love, you know, genuity, honesty, all of those kind of yeah. aspects of spirituality. Mm -hmm. If you don't have all of that, you can't really have fulfilling sex. Mm -hmm. Most people have sex. The casual hookup culture mm -hmm. is built on sex that is not from a spiritual standpoint, yeah, in my opinion, because you can't attach emotions. Ejaculation-focused sex. You can't attach emotion. The moment you attach emotions to sex, you're already having it on that sacred spiritual level, mm -hmm. you know. And the moment you also had intentions to your sexual experience, mm -hmm. you've already taken it past the physical experience into a spiritual experience mm -hmm. because now you're being conscious of the sensations. Mm -hmm. You're being conscious of why mm -hmm. am I doing yeah. this? You're being conscious of what's my partner feeling mm -hmm. or what they're going to get from it, yeah. you know. So the moment we start to do all that, we're already taking that into a deeper level. Yeah. And also there are people who don't like to have conversations about with people they have sex with. They're like, no, I don't want you to. I mean, if we cannot connect intellectually, 
or connect emotionally? Why are we connecting? Why are we connecting physically? And on a naked one, like in that most primal, yes, it's like. Why are we doing that? So it's just really those simple things. It's not really so far fetched and woo woo like that. It's just those very conscious experiences. You're just bringing the consciousness into you know into the sex. Like I, sometimes when I meet clients. I know I'm not supposed to have sex with a client mm-hmm. because one, there's no connection. Yeah. Two, there's like my something just feels off in the sensations in my body. Yeah. And I tell women, your pussy talks to you. Mm-hmm. It tells you when it doesn't want that dick in the pussy. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes we are so out of that zone. Yeah. So those are aspects where we can add, you know, yeah. experience spirituality within sexual. They are not exclusive. They are like in very intertwined. You yeah. Know, and with when sexuality you... being the intersect of it. Yeah, and when you become more conscious, you're also you also affirm your autonomy more. Yes. Because you're just like, nah, I'm not feeling this. I and I will absolutely it. not Yeah. I will absolutely not it's how some people say, Oh, it's from pH balance and like when they get BV or yeast infections after certain people, they feel like it's their body telling them, mm, I don't mm-hmm. want this person and so and that's with every I feel like with every um facet of you know, anything that has to do with energy, consciousness, psychology, they will always tell you how the body speaks to you, yeah. whether it's by storing information, whether it's by trauma, whether it's by how you react and setting. The body is like a computer, yeah. consistently taking in data, relaying back, processing information. It's just up to you to, to now c- consciously be in yes, tune with it. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, I love that. So I love that, you know, I could have this conversation and I love what you're doing. I really appreciate that there are people in this space that are promoting conscious, mindful, yeah. sexual, healthy experiences. So thank you so much for coming on here. Do you want to tell thank our listeners and our viewers where they can find you, how they can support you? So I Instagram is allergic to me, sort of. So they keep deleting my... But I have a new one that I recently opened, um, Joy Cable. And I think that also my Twitter account. I'm on Tread, Joy Cable as well. And so can you spell YouTube, it? J-O-Y-K-E-B-U. Mm-hmm. Okay. YouTube as Joy Cable TV. Okay. All right. And you know where to find me at House of Chocolates, um, Spizzle Swallow Pod on Instagram, SOS Pod Official on Twitter, Spizzle Swallow Podcast on TikTok, Spizzle Swallow Podcast on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, comment. I will see you when I see you. Bye.